So the entrance, actually from here it's not too bad, but from the street, it's unclear as to where you enter the building. And I was just wondering, philosophizing, I guess they call it, um, about how since it's unclear where you enter the building, perhaps it's unclear where human rights start. Or, okay. No, I, and there's, there's possibly something to that. Um, I was thinking that, you know, the unclear signage and the, the lack of universality of human rights maybe tied in together. Yeah. I don't know, maybe there's a message, maybe there's not. We don't even know. It says group entrance. So we're, yeah. there's only two of us. I don't know if we can get in here. We're not a big enough group. I don't know. We'll see. But there's no other sign. There is literally no other sign out front indicating an entry point. Yeah. None. So the group entrance where we came in compared to what is apparently the main entrance where we had to go to get our tickets and things. The thing? Well, we're going to do this one first. Yeah. Do that one first? Okay. Because I wanted to get a sense of when you come in and start the main galleries, you come up this ramp around the outside. It's the fundamental limit to being on the So we have a hundred points, I think it said, of human rights through time. And it talks about the people and the events. And y'all, some of these are frighteningly recent. UN Convention aims at eliminating discrimination against women, 1979. That's the year I got my driver's license. UN passes Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous People, 2007. This is a battle that is still being fought. Others say that human rights are universal. There are seven billion of us on Earth, and there are just as many ways to see and understand our world. Painting, writing, protesting, taking part in social movements. scared to say what's on your mind. You shouldn't feel scared to express yourself. Notre peuple a toujours vécu sur ce qu'on appelle l'île de la torture, composée de nombreuses nations, enracinées dans des terres ancestrales. Par culture of human rights begins with people expressing values that matter to them, like the right to vote, to speak freely, 
to gather in public without fear. And the government were picking up kids. I look back at my parents and I said, I don't know what to do. I started crying, but I was grabbed by my arm and forced into the plane. I hope there's a solid floor out there. <laughs> it, is, it is not glass. Sure, let's talk about these little spaces that we're finding. into my quiet space. So when you step into these little rooms inside the museum, it kind of blocks out the rest of the sound and there's a very quiet music playing. It's kind of like a little quiet space to sort of relax because there's a lot of stuff going on in this museum. A lot.
posting a video. And by spreading the word that what we say or do online can change a person's life. Who's telling you story? Should we believe them if they're an authority figure? Media favors some voices over others. Can a story feel one-sided? Whose voice or opinion is missing? And why? Can the words in a media message be free from bias? How do words shape our understanding of an issue or event? Images can be even more powerful than words. But are we getting the whole picture? What can't we see that might change how we think? Media messages can awaken us to human rights. But they can also violate them. Stereotypes are created and disseminated through a variety of media. But they don't just sell hamburgers and skin products. Like Dove and its Real Beauty campaign. Dove got applause for challenging popular notions of beauty. A criticism for continuing to promote beauty is the standard by which women are judged. Social media can be a way to participate in and even change the conversation. But efforts to challenge media representations don't always address gender inequality. How do you think representations of women influence us as Canadians? Do you think there could be a connection? Jewish members of Parliament. 